Good morning. Hello, everybody. This is Paul Fruitful Trees, and I'm with the Orlando Gardener, Kevin himself. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, brother. I'm doing good. Paul. All right. I finally made it to Orlando to your garden here, and I'm going to see all his trees and his pots and in the ground and what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad to finally have you here. I've been wanting you to get here a long time, and, and y'all, he's here. <laughs> I've been watching uh, Kevin for a long time. I'm going to put his link below and this yard for a long time. And believe it or not, I've been into this for a long time, but when I really got serious, mm -hmm. your videos helped me so much. Well, thank you. Yeah, yes, thank sir. you. And uh, they still do. They still yeah. do. And uh, I'm excited. I'm also excited. You you love mangoes, but you don't only have mangoes. I'm excited about that. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to see yeah, everything he has here today. We're going to check it out. So yeah. here we go. Remember, his link's below to his YouTube channel. And we're going to get started right now. All right, Kevin. So how big is your property here? Uh, it's a, it's about an acre, um, but as I tell people, it's a very odd acre, as you'll see as you do the tours. Uh, it's, it's because I have an expressway that came through years ago uh, when my grandmother owned the property. It kind of cut the, uh, the, the uh, yard off, and it's, it's kind of shaped oddly, but it's, it's about an acre, give or take. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yes. And uh, how long have you been on the property growing trees? Uh, well, I've been growing trees here probably about seven years now. Um, it's been a journey. Uh, I've, I've done some of the traditional stuff, uh, but one of the things I'm big on, uh, Brother Paul, is I'm big on uh, dealing with your property, your yard, your space, because everything, every property, every address is slightly different. We have zonal uh, 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 time zones and stuff, you know, things are alike, but uh your yard is your yard like i got a microclimate here yeah so uh yeah it's, it's been it's been a good it's been a good journey what were the first trees you planted here all right it was a uh, uh bailey's marvel nam doc my and a seedling uh that it turned out to be it was, it was supposed to be an oak rung tongue but it turned out not to be it's it's, it's a seedling and i've been we'll pass by it i've been grafting over to it yeah, yeah and what made you decide to start growing fruit trees well Honestly, I went through something. Uh, I had a, a, a moment in my life uh, that I was challenged and, and I wanted to start gardening. So that's what I did. I started gardening. And once you start gardening, that opens up the door to fruit trees. And so uh, I was passing by this guy around the corner, Mr. Reed, and I saw like, you know, 50 mango trees in this little bitty property. And I just kept going by his house to uh, talk to him, to, you know, to ask him what was he doing. And he gave me my first little list of what to go and get from a nursery. So, you know, that was, that's been many years ago and many trees later. <laughs> now, do you graft most of your trees here or do you buy them from nurseries or both? Well, I do a little bit of both. Uh, I do some grafting now. Uh, my grafting... Um, it's so so. Uh, I have good good years and bad years, but um, but most of the trees are from nurseries. I, I used to get my uh, the majority of my trees from Mrs. Van and Apopka, but she since uh, she lost her husband, so she went out of business. But I got a great number of trees uh, from her, and I've gotten them from everywhere. There's a there's a nursery over in um, West Orlando, uh, Mr. Chris and. Um, he, he, he sells big trees. And so just a few here, a few there, from some from Nick's Edible. And well, if I can get a good, good buy at. <laughs> How many trees do you have in the garden? Oh, wow. That's, that's a good question. Um, probably uh, a couple of hundred, a couple of hundred. Everything is not in the ground. As most people know, uh, I'm known uh, for growing mango trees and fruit trees and pots. Uh, quite a few uh, in, the, in the ground, uh, but most in pots. And um, but a couple of hundred, yeah. Now, for sure. what's the biggest pot you have? Uh, the biggest pot I have is like a forty-five. 45. A forty-five. So, yes. what's your plan when they grow out of the pot? So well, you keep going up. Uh, well, actually, uh, Mr. Paul, um, I met this guy years ago, um, Southern Spirits of Life, Richard Wynn, and he had. This is what changed my life. He had a fifteen-year-old Valencia Pride that was only 12 feet tall. And it was in a 45 to gallon, 45 gallon pot. And he was like, man, you can do it. They say it can't be done, but you can do it. You just gotta maintain them, uh, feed them, 
this, that, and other. Don't worry about root rot and root bound and all that. Uh, especially if you're not, he said, if you're not going commercial, the tree will give you just some, enough fruit for you and your family. And that changed my life uh, because at first uh, I didn't buy any giant trees. Anything that wasn't mid-sized to dwarf, I wouldn't deal with. But after seeing a 15-year-old Valencia pr a pride tree that was only 12 feet tall in the pot, that changed the game for me. I was like, Bombay. <laughs> I was sure. taking everything, man. So one of the comments I questions I get, and we're going to look at your trees, but what do you mm -hmm. feed uh, your, the trees? Uh, is it the same type of soil mixture for everything, or does it depend on the age of the tree and how it's doing? Okay. I get that question so many times, Paul, and I must be honest with your subscribers and mine too. Listen, I get what I can get. What's on sale? You know, I'll go to the box store or I'll go to the nursery and load my old pickup up, uh, you know, and, uh, but I do uh, potting soil, native Florida sugar sand, and a little bit of peat moss if I have it. But if not, I do native soil and potting soil together because mango trees do well in, in the Florida sand, you know, from just north of here all the way to Homestead. They do really well in, in Florida sand. So I don't doctor them up too much, but I will share with you what uh, one something that uh, somebody told me about a long time ago that I didn't know about. That's mushroom compost. You want to change your garden? Mushroom compost is like steroids. And whenever I can get my hands on it, I'll throw a little bit of that in there. But as far as fertilizer, it's straight compost. I compost every year. I get loads of mulch. My whole yard is mulched. Everything is mulched, but I get two or three yards of mulch, and I uh, dump mulch every year. Every year they get a new layer of mulch, and because you know uh, that's how the Creator, uh, you know, has his trees to prosper all over the world. The limbs fall right under the tree where the roots are. The leaves fall right under the tree where the roots are, and they do well. The back to eating gardening. And where do you get your mulch? Um, just uh, neighboring uh, uh, nurseries okay. or the tree trimmers. Okay. Yeah, the tree trimmers are my best friend. I, I see them side the road. Hey, here's 20 bucks. I give them my address. They come. They dump a couple of loads about three times a year. Yes, sir. The, the now, native. Well, with the different potting soils you use, depending what you can get, mm -hmm. do you keep track? I use this potting soil and this is how it did, or do you just put it in and don't worry about it? I put it in and don't worry about it. Okay. And that's the truth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you sometimes see trees doing better than other, and you might say, oh, maybe I should use a different potting soil next time, but you don't even think about that? Uh, I, I notice coloring, um, but I really, I have, I, I've been blessed to, to be where I can, um, kind of pay attention to them and so as long as they're not really doing bad you know uh, and I do use fish emotions uh, and that's actually what you might smell if you visit the, you you might smell a little something I got fish in the back brewing <laughs> if you would and um, uh, but no I don't I don't do any detailed stuff I should I should keep a, a log of it but just by a simple memory uh, just I keep it as basic and as simple as possible because I don't want this to become a job. I want this is, you know, to be something that I enjoy to do. When you, you say know. use fish emulsions, basically you just put a dead fish in berries, I, right? I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, All sir. Right. I rake, rake it back, put the fish down there, or uh, in the back I have a barrel about yay high. And um, first I start with them being in coolers, and I let them kind of rot down, and then I put them in the barrel. Let them rot out, and um, and then I just dump the fish juice into yeah. the and bones and all into the soil. And I'm big at doing the natural way. I'm big. Uh, every now and again, somebody a uh, 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 subscriber or uh, uh, one of the neighbors will come by and bring some some uh, some type of fertilizer. I try to stay away from it, but I I, I must admit I did do some zero zero uh, twenty this year. I did called the Chris from Truly Tropical. Yeah. Okay. And did you mm. notice the difference or not? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I did. I did. And zero zero twenty is for fruiting. 
because okay. the whole state of Florida had a bad mango season last year, like from here all the way to Homestead, uh, I wanted to make sure my trees get a good chance. So for the first time, I bought some 0, zero uh, 20 and I put a little bit in the pots. But other than that, I've never done that. I just, I'm just natural. Do you spray the leaves with anything? Okay, I use uh, neem oil. Okay. And um, I basically neem oil. And um, there was another product that was on the market that's no longer on the market, uh, organic material. I learned years ago from this guy on um, Instagram. And, uh, but they took it, Amazon took it off. Uh, but it was really good. But I've learned, I've learned to master the powdery mildew. Uh, when Chris said the enemy of powdery mildew is water, she meant it, and I have, I have won the battle with. I will with the water hose. I will do it three times a week. When that powder, when we have that season, Paul, where the powdery mildew just hit the yards all over the Florida, I come out with the water hose, uh, you know, and have the pressure hose on it, and I spray them. I start at the top and work my way down. And spray it all the way down to the ground, and and I've won the battle. I have won the battle. I've been spraying my trees recently with moringa leaf extract. Mm, I heard yeah, about so that. Yeah, so it's supposed to be amazing, but yeah. we'll yeah. see. But it's yeah. uh, <laughs> it's exciting. Yeah. Uh, so the trees that are growing in pots, mm -hmm. if you have critters like squirrels and raccoons, do you find they bother the trees in a pot less often, or it don't make a difference to them? Wow, that's the first time somebody asked me that. And that's a great question. And, and just doing a little research in my mind, uh, I noticed that they don't bother the, the fruit that's in the pot. That's, that was awesome. Um, but uh, the trees in the ground, they'll get hit. Yeah, sure. they'll get hit. But uh, that's, a great, that's a great question. That's, that's sure. something I got to think about. All right, but, well, we'll have more questions. But show us some of these amazing trees because we're just walking in your yard right here. Mm -hmm. And right away, you have seen like 10 pots, maybe 20 pots. Yeah. And now what determines if you're going to keep a tree in a pot or put it in the ground? What, what's that your decision on that? How do you know when <laughs> you say, I got a tree, I'm going to keep this in a pot or this one's going in the ground? How do you determine that? Uh, the, taste, the taste and the growth habit. Uh, if it's a giant tree like Elephant Tusk, Valencia Pride, Edward, it's not going in the ground. Um, I had an Elephant Tusk here years ago, and I've never seen anything like that, Paul. Even it grew faster than a Valencia Pride, and I find I had to sell it. I had to. I really wanted to get it where I could taste the fruit, but it went from a three-gallon to... I imagine about, mm, probably about 13 feet tall in like a year and a half. Oh. Yeah, and I was like, I can't do this. I can't, I trim it, it, it grow on back up. But uh, if it's a mid-sized tree and I really, really like, I gotta like the fruit. And I'm getting to the point, I got so many trees now, and so much going on and still getting trees and I don't have room for them. Uh, if it's really good, it's gonna go into the ground. Yeah, but it has to be good, and it can't be a giant tree. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. So, mm -hmm. yeah, show us some of the trees you have here. Uh, well, I got more questions as we're going to go along, but. Absolutely. Uh, well, this tree um, fooled me. It fooled me. It was, uh, it was tagged as a sugar loaf. That's not sugar loaf. This is sugar loaf, and this is why I had both of them side by side. I've actually been uh, talking about these true trees for forever, and this one finally produced. But as you can see, it looked more like a carry. I was just thinking that. <laughs> yeah, it looks, looks more like a carry. So we'll be tasting these in a couple of weeks, and uh, if it be carry, it's going to leave the property for sure. Now, why uh, do you say that? You don't like carry? You already have them. I already have it. Okay. Yeah, so I'll, do you not like to have more than one variety because of your space? Uh, no, because I have probably about five ice creams out here, uh, probably about the same amount of, uh, sugar loaves, uh, three or four pickerings. So I have multiple trees. It's just that, um, uh, this particular tree is not one of my, my favorites, even though, uh, Carrie is the number one selling mango. And when you do a collab of all the orchards all over Florida, it's, it's number one. Well, I uh, concur with you. And, and, and now that Angie's out, it yeah. tastes like uh, better Kerry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Kerry. Yeah. And Sunrise. Sunrise is... 
Yeah, yeah. Let but, me correct you. Uh, you asked me what my favorite one this year has been. I had some yeah. sunrise the other yes. day. Wow. Really? Wow. It's the bomb. It, wow. it, it, it is. I, yeah. Yeah. All right. Is. So you got you got Kerry here. You got Sugarloaf here. Sugarloaf. And then, but look, everybody, these are fruiting in the pots. How old are these trees here? Uh, this tree is about four years old. And how old do you get them? Do you get them like when they're one gallon or three gallon, or do you get them this big? Between one and three. Yes. Okay. Uh, every blue moon, I'll get a larger one, and that's only here recently. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I don't buy big trees like that. I don't have the funds to do that. <laughs> and okay. the mango trees actually grow pretty fast. Yeah. You know, they, they don't take long. Now, how do you water these? That's an important question. Uh, well, actually, uh, I hand water them, um, pray for rain. And uh, I, I, whenever I see these side the road by the dump or I, as I got these here, I ordered these from a couple of nurseries. Uh, they're water basins you can get at nurseries for, for pots, but I hand water them with the water hose. And, How often? Um, this time of year when the fruit is about to get ready twice a week the most because I don't want them to water down. They get, the, they, they, you know, I had one year, a few, about three years ago, Paul, that uh, everything out here tastes like water. And that, that broke my heart, you know. Uh, but I was told by Chris at Truly Tropical, when they're tasting like water, if you if you can get two weeks no rain, or you can get a couple of weeks no water, and I'm thinking that my my trees here in two weeks will be you know starting pro to produce, get ready. So uh, I'm I'm down to like once a week now, once a week. And water. when you water them, so how long will you stay there and water it? Like a minute or like five minutes? Okay, uh, that's a good question, and uh, I'm glad you asked. Um, as some, some know that follow me, I'm, I'm, I'm a religious man, if you would. I'm a pastor. Um, everything I hear is done, if you would, in a symbolic manner. So these uh, uh, pots this size, they get 24 seconds of water, which represent the 24 elders that was at the uh, table in the book of Revelation. Uh, the trees are lined up according to scripture uh but that's just me that's just me uh i'm 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 a pastor i believe in yah the most high jesus christ uh i believe in god and so it's symbolic to to, to tell him thank you if you so would. what do you mean they're lined up according to scripture what do you mean by that okay like um uh when david uh went to the uh the stream to get uh uh weapons or rocks to defend Israel against Goliath, he got five smooth stones. So in this particular lineup right here, you got one, two, three, four, five. That's five smooth stones right there. Got it. And, and yeah, and then it'll it'll go another way. So sure. either they are um, after uh, something in the Old Testament or something in the Gospel or something in the New Testament, like some are lined up in sevens, which represent the seven churches in the book of Revelation or the seven colors that's in the rainbow for the real, what the rainbow is really about, which is the promise from the Most High. Uh, then I do 12. So everything is kind of lined up kind of like that. Even the spacing for those that is put in the ground. I like what you're saying, and I'm mm -hmm. the same way. This is why I tell people I can't plant the Valencia pride, because the Bible says pride comes before destruction. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. I got a friend. I won't plant one either. I got a friend down the street. She got all the Valencia yeah. pride. I'm, everybody here. watching, Valencia pride is great, but yeah. I just had to say that. So yeah. what are these? So the water basins on the bottom, because I know you used to plant on cement blocks. Yes. On the, you used to keep the pots on cement blocks, and maybe you're still doing some, but... What, what's the water basin about? Okay, uh, we're in Florida, and, and I'm in central Florida, and it gets hot. So after the fruiting season is done, we get into some, we get into a season where it gets really hot and no rain. And it's nothing like seeing uh, your hard-earned money go to waste, and that's something that you don't want. So to extend... Uh, the life of water in the trees, you know, I put the basins down so at least they can hold water. And people uh, inbox me and comment on my videos a lot of time and they say, what about root rot? This is my answer to root rot. 
in seven plus years of growing mangoes in trees in uh, pots, I've only lost two to root rot. Two, and I have hundreds. I have a ton of them out here, and I've only lost two. And they can sit in water for a long time and no root rot. Now, avocados is a different story. You're going to lose that in a couple of days, but I've only, I've only had that issue. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's a must, especially when I'm, I'm, you know, I'm gone. Sometimes I travel. I'm in other states, and um, I can't get you know, some people to come over to help out, you know, in, in watering. So I got the basins to kind of help keep my trees alive, if you would. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, how long will they last if you do go out of town and nobody's here to help you out? How long do you think it'll be okay? A week, two weeks, a month? In one week of the traditional Florida sun, they all, after about a week up here in Orlando, they're still alive, but they, you know, they, they're, they're screaming, saying, hey, we really need something to drink. And so after coming back one time about four years ago uh, and seeing what my whole forest looked like, and this is the food forest, you'll see, um, I was like, I can't do that anymore. So I, I started looking for uh, basins and whenever I can find them uh, at flea markets and different things. And then I learned that you can just go to a nursery and they'll order them for you. And they're, they're you know, you might think they're too expensive for being $15 a piece, but you know, you don't want to lose a $300 tree because you don't have no water in it. So when you water the tree, so the water stays in there at the bottom for yes, a little sir. while? When you, so are yeah. you watering the, the dirt or are you watering the basin or both? I do both. It's according to how, uh, how much time I have. Um, and it, it, they're funny. Sometimes I can give it the 24 seconds for this one, and the basin will start filling up, and sometimes uh, it, it doesn't happen. So I'll come back and do seven seconds in the basins, you know, represent that, you know, sure. and then I'll, then I'll move on. But they got to have water. They have to. Yeah, if you don't give them water, they'll die on you. And then in the flowering season, they got to have water in order to hold uh, uh, the flowers on in order for us to have no flowers, no fruit. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. So show us what else you got because I know people are interesting. So you got carry, yeah. you got yeah. sugar loaf, sugar loaf, and then I got the super duper duper M4. M4, yeah, the best late variety out there right now. Yeah, it it is. It's it's very late, very coconutty. Um, it doesn't have the multiple flavors as sugar loaf. But if you are a person that loves M4 or uh, love coconut flavored mangoes like pina colada, you know, sugar loaf, coconut cream, Edward, if you love anything in that family, this would be, definitely be the tree for you. And I have the, the red tag on it, which is an indication and a reminder that this is going in the ground. It, okay. It, 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 it now, so, so it is in the ground, right? Uh, no, it's in the pot. Yes. Oh, I'm looking at this one. What's this here? Yeah, that's just to prop it up. I got you. Okay, mm -hmm, I was a, okay. So yeah. that's in the pot. Wow, that's doing mm -hmm. great. Yeah. So mm -hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Nice. But it's going in the ground. That's M4. Now let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. You have, like you said, expensive trees here in the pots. Yes. Like I asked most people, do you worry about people coming by and taking the fruit? For you, I asked, do you worry about people coming by and taking the pot? Well, um, I haven't had an issue up until last year. All these years, all seven, eight years, no issues, Paul. Um, but uh, at the back of my property, uh, there is a, a little opening to another street. And so we did have some theft last year. But before, before that, we, had, we have no issues. My neighbors are some of the best neighbors on the planet. They get barbecue <laughs> and they get fruit. So they don't want their chance of getting fruit <laughs> to be eliminated by a thief. So they really watch the property, whether I'm out of town ministering about the most high or um, I'm fishing or whatever. Uh, they really watch the place. But last year, for the first time, I got I lost some gram. I lost my um, um, one of the largest mangoes in the world. Queen, uh, golden queen. I lost that one. Uh, I lost a few. Are you talking about the fruit or the actual tree? The tree, uh, Golden Queen mango. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have that in the back as well. It's, wow. It was it was about yay long, about yay thick. It was 
it had gotten to full potential and I was just waiting for it to get right. And uh and I and I actually lost a sugar loaf that year too. I, wow. as a matter of fact I did a, a short, uh the case of the missing sugar loaf. <laughs> wow. But other than that, no issues. No okay. issues. Because I, I give fruit away. Yeah. I give them away to the neighbors. All they gotta do is ask, you know? Exactly. And uh but I feel that there was somebody else. I don't, I don't All know. Right, I'm going to let you show us around here because you got so many trees and I got questions about every one. But I'm going to let you just show us what you want. No, yeah. no problem. No problem. Yeah, this is new to the garden. Um, this was recommended by a good friend and brother of mine from South Florida. <laughs> uh, brother by the name of Paul Fruitful Trees. Uh, he had got one for me. He was like, man, you ever heard of Sun Pauri? And I was like, yeah. He was like, man, you need it. I, I have it in my hand, so that's new to the garden. And it looks great. That's thank great. you, thank yeah. you. And right here is uh, Juicy Peach. Uh, wow. Juicy Peach was in the ground for a couple years, and it struggled to produce fruit. So uh, I, I took her up back out of the ground and put in a 25-gallon pot, and this year, she is loaded, so I'm very happy about that. So that's another question about putting trees in the ground and taking them out. Mangoes pretty do pretty well with that, right? You can yeah, yeah, they do. Uh, if, if you have to give them, if you take them out of the ground, you have to give them like uh, probably about seventy-five percent shade. Yeah, they they need that. If you give them any more than seventy-five percent shade, you're gonna have a problem. Which I got a problem with my largest sugar loaf because it get a few hours of sun, but it's still living, but it's struggling. Did you, did you root prune it when you took it out or you just took it out? I just, I take it out. When, when, I, when I take them back out of the ground, I, I take them out and scratch around the root ball and then put it in, put it in uh, the pot and, and let it go. All right. Yes. All yeah. right. And this is Kathy K3. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of it, uh, but uh, it's a decent fruit. So, and I, I have friends that like it, and so I'm keeping it. Uh, it's, it's done well in a pot. That's Kathy. Uh, this is actually a uh, cotton candy that I grafted for a friend years ago and uh, still waiting on her to pick it up. <laughs> but uh, that's the graft right there, and, and there's a couple of fruit on it. They're they still kind of behind right now. Uh, but you got that one, and then you got Romani which is a beautiful mango. It's shaped like an apple. If you didn't, if you didn't know any better, you think it was a Granny Smith or something. Wow. Yeah, um, it's not, Paul, it's not one of my favorites. It's a very intense mango. It's like, this is what Ramon is like. It's like a traditional mango flavor intensified by four. It's so rich. And uh, so uh, uh, I keep that uh, for its uniqueness. Uh, the traditional pickering. You can't, you can't be the pickering. And this thing has been with me for about five years. And it just, it's going to give me 15 to 25 mangoes every year. Every year. Back behind it with, uh, with no fruit on it is uh, my last ice cream that I purchased. It was actually loaded, loaded with fruit and Back a, a couple of months ago, Paul, when Florida had all that wind, that tree, that tree lost every fruit, wow. and it hurt me so bad because I really love ice cream. <laughs> I really love ice cream. Here is one of my favorites. Obviously, it's going in the ground, and this is sweet tart. You know, love the blue tones that's in the skin. Uh, yeah, this this is a good old sweet tart right here. My sweet tart has so many fruit, the branches are breaking. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I see you have a pineapple here, too. Yes. So tell us about that, because that's pretty cool that you can do that in the pot and have fruit like that, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you know, uh, pineapples grow uh, from the top, uh, the cutting at the top. And so every now and again, I'll go to a neighboring farmer's market. And um, when you go out there, they do the fruit cups. And I'll ask for the tops, and what I'll do, Paul, is come and just stick a, a stick one of the tops into the ground with the mangoes. They're different places around the property, and just and just grow them. I don't really worry about the variety of the kind or anything, but I actually I just actually like growing things. I, I do. I like helping people to grow their relationship and get closer to the Most High, 
and I love, I absolutely love growing things. So, you know, like, you know, uh, the most high, one of the first things he did was plant a garden. It said God planted a garden. And so, uh, uh, if I may share, after I really started getting into the fruit trees, I came out of my back door when I was living here. And I was like, what is this? I know you directed me in some kind of way. What is this? And so I, what I did was I pulled up every, every place in the Bible, in the scriptures, that the word garden was at. And so what I noticed is that he, he planted in the garden. He, he planted a garden. He put man in the garden. And also he had Israel to be gardeners. I noticed, uh, I forget what, what uh, scripture it is, but the scripture says that Gethsemane was in a garden. When he went to pray, it was in the garden. The tomb was in the garden, the scriptures say. And when he got up, they supposed he was a gardener. I was like, oh, okay, I'm on the right path. I'm on the right path. And so with all the stuff that they're doing with the chemicals and the food in the store, the laws of God in the scriptures is, 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 is the way to go. So, so you heard the phrase, come out of Babylon, my people, right? Yes. Would yes. you consider, to some degree, us being in Babylon today with the way the world is? I believe America is a type of Babylon. Okay. In mm -hmm. Jeremiah, when the That's children of Israel were taken to Babylon, mm -hmm. it says the scripture, plant gardens and eat the food they produce. Yes. <laughs> yes. That. yes. That's right. I love it. That's what that, we're doing. That's why I love this man. <laughs> I love each family yes. for life. All each right. family. We got more. Uh, let's see. Which way do you want to go? You lead the way. It's your garden. Okay. Right here is uh, one of the best mangoes on the planet. Some people don't fool with it for two reasons. Not because of the flavor of the fruit, but because the fruit is tiny and because the tree grows really slow. But it's worth getting pina colada. Pina colada is absolutely delicious. I put this tree in the, gar in the ground two years ago after I took the time to kind of force the growth, if you would. And um, I just I paid special attention to this particular tree because the fruit was so good and I wanted to really push growth to it. And so I, I, I sourced out some, some uh, mushroom compost, fed it that to get it to go ahead and grow up. And when it finally got a certain height, I put it in the ground. Great for backyards, great because it's a slow grower. Um, Next to it, and you want to watch this, this dip here, uh, it's one of my favorites, and that's Orange Essence. Very unique, one of the very few mangoes that is firm. It's like Dwarf Hawaiian. When you bite into uh, Orange Essence and Dwarf Hawaiian, it's, it's very firm, almost like an apple. Extremely citrusy, and I, learned, I love citrus mangoes, citrus tasting mangoes. Next to it is one, one, one that you like, uh, Rob Paul, and that is orange sherbet. That's orange sherbet, which is Lemon Meringue's uh, sister, uh, daughter, I mean, uh, Lemon Zest's sister. Yep. Uh, she didn't do real well this year um, in production, but it's okay. I'll take the five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'll take the nine. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm good with what, what I get. Next to it, is the workhorse this is the pickering now the one that was over in the pot this is her sister purchased them at the same time put that one in the pot kept this one in the pot for a little while then put it in the ground and it produces like a workhorse every year this used to be the number one requested um, mango tree for starters but i changed about uh, two years ago back and forth between it and Glen. I really like Glen for a starter tree. Uh, it, it does the same thing. Production tastes good. Matter of fact, to me, it, I, I like it a little better than Pickering. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the Pickering, about the taste, because it's a great tree for keeping it small and yes, stuff, sir. but taste-wise, when you compare it to other things, I mean... Yeah, you it's, know? Just, it's just okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's okay. <laughs> yes, but it's, it's great for starting out. And next to it, Doing, doing good is uh, good old Super Julie. Super Julie is, this side of the tree is doing pretty good this season. Um, not as b good as it has been in, in the past times, but it's doing good. And, and each one of these trees, uh, seven feet apart, 
which represent the seven churches in the book of Revelation. Um, uh, the seven women, there was a lot of women that followed Christ. Uh, but in particular, there were seven women. There were three Martha, Martha, uh, uh, Mary, 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 Martha, uh, Susanna, uh, Salome, and uh, and one more, uh, one more. And they were really close. We talk about the twelve apostles, but there were seven women. But anyway, uh, there's. I was just going to ask you about the distance between the trees. Yeah, yeah. So seven feet apart. Now, how are you going to take care of that when these trees get bigger? You're going to prune the trees. Prune. How Prune yeah, okay. I don't have a problem because I'm not trying to go commercial. It's just for me, my family, and the brotherhood such as yourself. Uh, I'm I'm just not I'm not into you know going commercial and all that. P people are always trying to get me to do that, but I have enough people to feed, you know. And so I don't mind pruning them heavy. I will chop them down, give them a good haircut real quick. Yeah, I, I will. And, and some I'm, I'm going to be moving. I saw your videos when dealing with Alex Backyard. <laughs> I saw that, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be moving some too, cause some a little bit too close. Yeah, yeah. I just stuck them in the ground. I did some five footers, and that's too much. This is lemon meringue, and I wish I had about seven of them that were ready I could give to you. But this is lemon meringue. She is doing fabulous. She's doing her thing. Uh, after this season, she's going to get a major haircut uh, from the, the top and then a little bit on the sides. Uh, but she does well every year. Now, when people come here and they taste your mangoes, is there one or two particular mangoes that stands out with everyone? I know everyone has different taste buds, but it's like one or two that everyone loves it and, and stands out or are they they all just phenomenal? No. Um, lemon meringue and ice cream. They're blown away. They are blown away, more so ice cream than lemon meringue. There's just something special about ice cream. It's I, I just, agree. it's so different. It's like different. It's like it's not even a mango. I know they say that about that too, but, you know, yeah, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got, I got to so how big is this pot here? Uh, these are the 45s here. So that's a 45. Yeah. So you put a little kiddie pool under that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I use them. I use them. Uh, they are cheap uh, because it's tough to find the, uh, the basins for these. And then they are so expensive. So, um, yes, this might only last you two years, but it's just a couple of bucks. But what's going to happen in two years? Uh, they, they rot out. Okay. Yeah, so I see out. one over there with water in it, actually. Yeah. So how long will that water stay in it? Uh, actually, that water has been in there for a couple of weeks. Um, it's according to the soil, and um, but this particular soil that's in here uh, is um, is from the bottom of a lake. So what I'm noticing is is that this soil is not taking up uh, the water and uh, allowing the tree to drink the water as most of the others are. Uh, but the tree is is is. It's struggling, but it's still alive. It got it's green. I'm I'm very hopeful. I'm okay. very hopeful. Yes, but I use the kiddie pools, and I I encourage people that look if if you want them to live, and you're in Florida, hey, you better do something. You know, if you're gonna do it in pots, and this is one of the things about uh, growing in pots. If you don't have the time to do this, you know, get you two or three trees, put them in the ground. And let them be. So, do you think a person can be successful growing trees in pots long term mm -hmm. without putting the pans under the trees? I think so, uh, because my uh, my friend Richard Wynn he showed me that it can be done. You just gotta uh, have the time to water. Got mm -hmm. you, got you, got you. Yeah, yeah, just gotta have the time to water. Uh, this is Bombay. Wow. Uh, yeah, wow. yeah, super giant tree. W will not go in the ground. <laughs> this is. Uh, um, triple set. Okay. This is triple set right here. This is my love hate mango, Florigon. <laughs> I only keep Florigon for production. It is one of the most productive mango trees out there. It just produces, produces, produces. And if it wasn't called for the wind, that, that two weeks we had all that wind, this tree will have triple the amount on it. Yeah, wow. this this is a workhorse. I, I'm not a fan of that, but it's a workhorse for sure. 
Uh, we got rosy gold right here. Um, then we got world famous coconut cream, sugar loaf sister. And we got a few down there on the bottom. Yep. Yep. And this is my first time having coconut creams on this property. I got two trees, one in a pot. We kind of walk past because she won't, she won't produce for me. <laughs> but it's, it's going on. This is uh, fruit punch. Wow. My, my wife's favorite. Now, I had all, almost given up on fruit punch until I visited Cicada Grove and a couple of more. Uh, uh, fruit growers and they said Kevin do not give up on fruit punch it does this for everybody except you have a special yard Chicago Grove said the first few years it's gonna give you one or two mangoes and then when it gets some size all of a sudden boom, it just start producing so um, I'm very I've been getting one mango paw from this tree for the last three years one so I got three this year <laughs> I got three but it's getting dug up this is one of the ones that's getting dug up. It's just too close. I'm going to dig up guava. Guava has to go. Guava's going in a big pot. And I'm going to take fruit punch and put fruit punch right here between lemon meringue and then one of your favorites, sunrise, right here. I'm going to put her right in, in, in the middle here. And then the lily wana, which is a mango species, I can move it anywhere because it's in a pot. Now, how do you move those when they're in pots? Were you a dolly or something? I got dollies. So let me ask. So you got a fruit punch and a guava, both excellent mangoes. Yes. Why are you moving the guava out of the ground? Uh, it's, it's honestly, it's just too, too close. So not the best spot. Yeah, it's not the best spot because this is a vigorous tree. I prune it heavy every year. This tree has been pruned three times. Um, I prune it heavy every year, and it just wants to grow, so it's just not the best spot. And so I'd rather have uh, fruit punch just right centered here, and then I can manage these because all these are going to get a major haircut uh, coming where this one is. Uh, this one will be okay. Sunrise will be okay. When you take the guava out, are you going to? Do you cut it before you pull it out of the ground? Uh, I am. I am. Or um, I'm going to air lay it. I'm going to try air laying the three, those three main, this one, this one, and this one. Because I recently met a guy uh, not far from here, probably about 15 minutes here. His backyard looks exactly like mine and yours. Old guy been doing this for years from Jamaica. Don't want to be on camera. Uh, it's, you come to the front of his house, it looked like the president of the United States lived there, but when you go to the back, it looks like this. And, um, uh, this guy is a master at air layering mango. Wow. It's, he's a master. I heard about him. I went there. I'm going back to do some filming. He's a master at it and he's a phenomenal grafter. He has a tree that is uh double this size and it has 25 different fruiting mangoes on it uh and whenever you come back up here paul you have time we'll go over there together uh -huh. sounds good i was just at somebody's yard which i'm actually going back this week uh-huh i think he has like 90 varieties on one tree wow wow That's yeah in homestead yeah in homestead this is uh baptiste Okay. Which the, the one they said tastes like carrots, which is not. So many fruit on there. That's yes, amazing. yes, in a pot. Amazing. It's, it's, it's perfect for, for pots. Now, what's the idea of the, the PC, PVC pipe? Okay, I went down to What's Ripening, Matt Reese, yep. on, the, on the West Coast, and he had these pipes in the ground with the mango name. Gaia, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, normally they're, they're facing where people can walk up okay. and see, but... Yeah, I, I got tags on them. I'm doing this. I'm doing a little bit of everything. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Angie. Um, then this is uh, um, Sunrise. Uh, Angie is phenomenal. Uh, as I've told people for years, though, you better catch it on the right day. Because you catch it on the wrong day, you got some real problems. <laughs> uh, this. So, I got a question about Sunrise. Yes. I saw you just made a post. Uh -huh. of a picture of sunrise. Now, my sunrise, uh -huh. they look like 
a spirit of 76 they're so colorful yeah and yours the picture you had this, this is just what they look like super green yeah they early they're early they get that color uh it's just that uh i had a visitor and they bumped it and it failed. Right, right. right. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, they, they, they get that color. <laughs> they get those beautiful colors, but that was just early. And I don't even have the fruit. I took, the, I took a picture of the fruit to put it online. And I was like, you bumped it, here you go, you can have it. <laughs> I told you to be careful coming through here. <laughs> yeah, that's come on. a great mango, sunrise. Come on through. Wow. It is. Sunrise is good. The tree's doing really well. Uh, this is a large mango, don't have but about four on here. This is Raposa from Hawaii. Very colorful mango, big like um, Bailey's Marvel. Um, last year, this tree was loaded, and this was one of the trees that actually um, uh, people took from. I, I didn't get a chance to taste taste none of these um, last year, but it's a good mango, traditional mango flavor, but it's a lot of mango. So if you're doing like dehydration and stuff like that, this is one of the mangoes to have right here for sure. Mm-hmm. Right behind me here is Golden Nugget, heck of a producer, mid-sized mango, um, a little bit citrusy. Um, back in the time when I was just getting varieties because of different reasons. I got some because of production. I got some because of uh, different flavors and for different reasons, but uh, good mango. I'm very happy. Uh, with, with this mango here. Now I see you have a banana tree right here. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. Mean, what's, I do. Why do you have the banana there? Do you want, are you planning on growing it or do you like the way it looks or what? what, what? A little bit of both. A little okay. bit of both. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely growing it. Um, it's, um, it's a dwarf variety. I don't know what, what's the name of it. I, I have, a, I have about 10 different kind of bananas out here, but I haven't, I haven't remember. I'm not into bananas sure. like uh, like I am mangoes. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, this is my uh, Pimsing Mom, which is Pimsing. normally loaded. Every year is loaded. But that wind came through, Paul, and knocked everything down. Believe it or not, even with the wall here, this expressway behind me, um, knocked everything down, and I'm I'm stuck with one, but it's okay because I still love her. I uh -huh. still love her. She's still good. Uh, Chris from Truly Tropical introduced me to that particular mango. Yeah, this is Dwarf Hawaiian right here. Um, I bagged a few of them up, and I'm going to be bagging all of them up uh, because this is the this is a fruit. As Chris from Truly Tropical said, it gives off an odor like peach cobbler and the squirrels and the coons and the rats, they'll hit this one first. You can smell it. You walk by and it's like, yeah, something is right. So I'm actually bagging these up and I, I honestly wish that I wouldn't have put this on the, the edge of my property at that time. Um, from here back, it belonged to the city of Orlando. Um, I'm in the process of cleaning it up because it's between my property, which was right here, and that guy's property, uh, they couldn't do anything with it. So finally, just recently, they sent me a letter saying it's mine. <laughs> so uh, the city of Orlando gave us this, so we're going to be cleaning this up, cutting the trees down, and uh, we'll be planting that in too. That's great. But because of all this, you know, the critters can come down and they smell that, and they, yeah, they, they, they go for it. <laughs> yeah, uh, we got good old Duncan over here. Good to some people. Yeah. <laughs> Great in production. Phenomenal in production. Good for giving the guests. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I say. Yeah, I don't, I don't do Duncan at all. It's, it's a heck of a producer. Uh, right on the other side of that, in that 25-gallon pot, is your and my favorite. That's ice cream. That's one of the wow. five. Yeah, it's it's, it's it, They love pots. They love pots. And the other tree, Paul, had it was loaded just like that. And the wind, oh, man, man, the wind, the wind, the wind. Yeah, well, we can come on this way. Come on this way. Um, let's see. Um, right here is, that's Honey Kiss, 
right there. Um, and then we can go this way, if you don't mind. I'm gonna show you Golden Queen, which don't she doesn't have any fruit on it this year. But this is Golden Queen Mango Tree, which develops one of the largest mangoes in the world. Um, she had one on a year or so ago, and um, uh, I didn't get a chance to taste it, but um, I'm, I'm hopeful, and she'll do something in the future here for sure. Is that sure. the one you said somebody took? Yeah, yeah. They came through that little trail. Okay. Right there, right between that fence there. Okay. Uh, yeah, they, they came there. And I'm starting to plant this way now. I did uh, sugar app, a couple of sugar apples and um, adamoya and... This mango tree here is a um, cotton candy right okay. behind that June plum. Now, that June plum right here that's in front of it, uh, that's the original June plum. I have both varieties. I have the small American variety, and I got the big one. I haven't put that tree in the ground because I was told and I've seen that as soon as you put the original June plum in, it starts to climb like a Valencia pride. Wow, and I don't need that. Wow. I, don't, I don't need that. So this is this this is getting into my uh, work area, if you would. This is where I do my grafting and all this, that, and the fifth. So it's a little bit junky, but it's it's my work area. Uh, this is Edgar. Nice. This is Edgar right here. Um, you can come on this way. Got lychee here and sugar cane. This is uh this is sugar loaf. One sugar loaf I grafted a long time ago. This is Denise Mango, one of the most sought after right now, coming from Miss Denise in Melbourne. Um, I have the tree out here twice, and it seems to be reluctant to hold fruit the first few years, but I'm very patient because as anybody that have tried this fruit, uh, no, it's, it's really good. I'm going to head out there soon. I already in touch with her. Okay. All right. Awesome. Awesome. She has the Denise Mango. I grafted that uh, a few years back. And so... Um, now, did I'm, you graft it in the pot and then put it in the ground? Or did you take something that was here and just cut it and put pot it Pot first. Okay. Yes, sir. And then okay. that's Honey Kiss. they late season. Super sweet. Tree loaded. Absolutely loaded. Uh, lychee right here. Sugar cane beds right here. Um... Used to be five, I recreated. Uh, it was five for the um, um, the uh, five smooth stones. This is a variety. I think you were going to say the fivefold ministry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that fivefold ministry, five smooth stones. Um, um, here is uh, a Jamaican variety. This is a syrup variety I got from uh, a, a lady in Alabama. It tastes just like the original syrup from like years ago. It's a syruping cane. This is uh, a home green, and next to it is Georgia red. And then after it, in that purple pot, which will be in another one right there, that's going to be Jamaican black. Now, do you juice it or do you just chew it? I do both. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I was blessed to, uh, I just kept looking online. Uh, for a juicer, as you know, they're very expensive, sugarcane juices, the good ones. And so finally, it was this guy from India in um, Kissimmee, Florida, and he had purchased one with the hope of introducing his kids to sugarcane juice. And he introduced, and they were like, ah, dad, we don't want that. And so he sold it to me for half the price. Wow. So, yeah. You yeah, I have a hand crank one out now. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. This like, is... Uh, yeah. This is uh, um, uh, Gary. Gary, yeah, wow. that's, that's Gary. This is uh, Julian Laura. This is his favorite mango. Yeah, Gary. I love it. I love, I love that coconut. Anything coconut, Paul. Huh. A anything coconut. This is Tess Pollock. Tess Pollock, all right. Mm -hmm. Trees loaded. Absolutely loaded. And I, I whack it, cut it, prune it, and it produces. And it's, it's enough for... For me, my family, a few guests, and, you know, it's doable. Definitely doable. This is the nursery section <laughs> of the fruit to be. A little bit of everything over here. Uh, Neelum. Um, seedlings. Uh, one I'm going to sell. 
uh, what is it called? Bat mango. I just got it. I was at a nursery and I was like, bat. And they were like, yeah. It's I've actually had it. Really? Yeah. It comes from uh, Zane and, uh, in South Florida. It was uh, Excalibur had a tree and they called it the bat mango. Okay, tell me about it. Is it good? I don't remember. I think it had a classic flavor, if I remember. But it was good enough for them to, to name. Oh, okay. So do you sell trees too? Can I tell if people in this area are looking for trees? Should they uh, contact you? Give somebody order, you know. But mostly, I just I, I I'm friends with the nurseries, uh, and so I just source them out. I was like, hey, call these people. Call these kind of like you Got do it. with Paul. Got yeah, it. yeah. I mean, uh, with uh, you know what I'm talking about down there. Uh, uh. Yeah, down there with Tropical Acres. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, kind of the same, but a little bit of everything. Um, this is Moon Coon Sung Mango. Yep. Uh, this is Sugarloaf Mango. Um, what W2 stand for? Uh, uh, this was, this stands for my last name and my second pot. Uh, Montero Sport, uh, uh, Montero Nursery are delivering all over Florida now. And so I ordered a couple of trees from them. I wanted I wanted a second care of Michelle. And so this was, you know, one of the uh the trees. How do you like Karen Michelle? <sighs> really? I understand why it's coconut cream and sugar loaf sister. <laughs> I only had one and it wasn't picked ripe. Yeah. So I gotta N knowing you, Paul, our taste buds are very similar. When you get a good one, <laughs> you're going to say, good morning. <laughs> yes. I want to show you this one, though, Paul. This is Mark Anthony. Yes, you mentioned that a lot. Mark this is Anthony. Mark Anthony, a Bombay seedling from my friend that I wanted you to get the video of the original Mark Anthony because this thing is getting momentum. Bombay seedling. Um, uh, grown in Kissimmee, Florida, just south of here. This thing is good. This thing will make you stop eating and eat it. It's uh -huh. so good. It has the traditional uh, Bombay texture. So you can, you can cut around it and twist it and, and open it up and scoop it out like ice cream. I tell you what it tastes similar to. You take your, your and my mango sunrise and blend it with fruit punch. Wow, wow. That's what you get with this. Wow. Yes, and it's very, very, it's, it's very smooth, just like his mother, Bombay. And uh, I'm yet to get one yet, but I'm very hopeful for this, this new variety. So that here. tree came from your friend? Yeah, yeah. I got budwood from it. I got budwood. And we can go around this way. I'm getting a, um, a, a, a greenhouse set up. Okay. Yeah, we starting to get a greenhouse. All right. This uh this is that seedling that I, that I purchased many years ago that was supposed to be uh, uh oak rung tongue, uh, but I've just done a lot of grafts onto it. I put a lot of grafts, so it's going to be a multi-purpose tree. Uh, but it it turned out to be a seedling. The lady sold me a seedling, but it's okay. It happens sometimes. And yeah. at the same time, I bought this one. These are my first trees. I bought this Bailey's Marvel. And uh, as you can see, they are giants. And, now uh, I hear it, normally they're late season, but this year somebody yeah. told me they already got uh, ripe ones. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I got to check mine because mine had turned color and I was waiting to check them. But look how big they are. Everybody. Yeah. This is a great, yeah. great mango. Yeah, they are huge. They are huge. This one is even bigger. Wow. They like that. <laughs> yeah, one of the three largest mangoes that I have on my property. You got Golden Queen, Bailey's Marvel, and Venus. Yeah. Of course, we got a whole bunch of other stuff. We kind of passing by Jaboda Cabo. Uh, uh, here you go, bro. Paul here. You know what this yeah, is? Yeah, this is Jamaican cherries. Yeah, man. I, I Tastes love like these. like Captain Crunch cereal. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, they are good. I hesitated for years to to buy these, buy this tree, um, but I couldn't help it anymore. They're just too good. The tree is known to be a quick grower but i met two people with six year old trees and um and they kept them at 12 feet so i was like oh i'm sold i i am so i love it i love it but i got rid of mine yeah i love it because yeah they're supposed to get big <laughs> no because mm -hmm. it's a snack oh 
and you want a meal. I want a meal. Okay, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. That is great. My neighbor has one that much on history. Mm, okay. Loquat, some seed, moringa. I have some medicinals out here. Um, if anybody who's anybody that's anybody trying to do anything healthy, you know how valuable moringa is. I have three trees and growing two more out here. Um, I started off having this for my family, but uh, I'm growing it for my neighborhood. It's neighbors. amazing. I got to send you information on the extract because to okay. do your trees with that, it's really amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Moringa, that's the way to go. Every yard should have a moringa tree. Every yard. Yeah. Every yard. Tiny picker in there with one mango on it. Um, good old uh, uh, turpentines mm -hmm. in a pot. Been there for years. Yep, this carried is loaded, low to the ground though. Wow. Yeah, it's uh oh look at that. Uh oh, I can give my buddy a gift. <laughs> what is that? That is Glenn. Glenn. Yeah, that's Glenn. Wow. <laughs> oh man, I was so hopeful something would be right. Nice. So I can give you a gift. Oh, my buddy. Glenn has nothing on it, so that's perfect. Okay, all right, okay. And uh uh but my carry. <laughs> was one of my first when it was on the list uh from mr uh reed mr reed he told me to get carry mango and so i got it it's been with me a long time done many videos about this finally put it in the ground uh just a year ago and um it got hit with cold two or three times but it's it's hanging in there it's hanging in there it's hanging in there but this is and this is glenn we got a uh uh, African pineapple. I don't know oh, what wow, variety. Pineapple. Yeah, wow. but a guy gave it to me and he said, whatever you do, do not plant it because it'll take over your yard. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's better for smoothies than anything. Yeah. Okay. Uh, pineapple from Africa. Uh, peach trees, peach trees. How do peach trees do here? Do well. Do well. My only issue is the bugs. That's right here. It's a, it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. I can have 150 peaches on here i might get three if i don't bag them up wow. if i don't we didn't have that the first five years we didn't have that problem paul and then all of a sudden something changed and now every year we get hit with the uh fruit flies wow. uh another peach hidden back here uh longing and then you know what this is. I saw this at your house. You the like, uh, uh, Groomer Chama Cherry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only reason I keep this thing, man, is for the medicinal. That's that's yeah. it. I really, I'm thinking about getting it up, but I, I need a little medicine out here too. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's my moringa tree. That's a moringa tree right there yep. as well. I harvested it. It was probably about 15 feet tall. Wow. I harvested it down. Uh, I make capsules, and, uh, and then uh, and I sell a few online to help uh, get some diapers. There you go. There you <laughs> and go. and uh, so and then they they grow back up. My trees are huge, both of them, but that's my second moringa tree. Lemon guava, lemon guava, Barbados cherry, right there in that pot, which is getting ready to go in the ground. Coming on around here is my largest mango tree. Graham. Graham. Yep. Graham. She is. And it's delicious too. Right? Yes, absolutely delicious. I think Julie's granddaughter or great granddaughter. One of the two. Now, I, I did something. I, I pruned it. I took five feet off it this year. Wasn't thinking that the energy was going to push the tree out. Oh, yeah. It pushed the tree out five feet. It was like, oh, you don't want me to go up? I'll go out. And so this thing came way out. So uh, yeah, but which I reduced my my uh, my, my uh, production. That thing normally has stuff all over it. It's loaded, but it's loaded around the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> it's loaded. Yeah, it got clusters everywhere, man. Got clusters everywhere. Yes, it oh. does. Now this is an old Georgia peach tree. The reason why I keep it is because this was here when I was a child. And I'm in my 50s. 
and it's been here that long I, as I can remember it don't do anything but I just keep it to remember grandmother when grandmother lived here yep kind of watch yourself if you speaking would speaking of which you and I have uh, little children and yes in, in, in 50 years they're gonna grow up and be Doing the same thing we're doing yeah, together, that's right. Why? just that's talking right. to each other about us. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, they will watch the, the yeah. water hose thing here. Uh, let me introduce you to my first development, um, my first seedling to uh, turn into something. I named it after my wife and my daughter. My wife is named Casey. My daughter is named Caitlin. So I took her K, her C, put it together, and I call it the Casey Mango. Um, I got a seed from South Florida. Uh, I think it was a Hayden, probably a uh, big mango. I used to say it was a kit, but, uh, about two years ago, one of my subscribers said, eh, Kevin, I don't think that was a kit seedling because all kit babies are not colorful, but Hayden babies are colorful. And when this is completely ripe, you got yellows and oranges and reds. And I was like, I think you're right. So now, is that two trees or one? It looks like this. It's one. Okay. It's one, but when it was growing up out of the pot, I let it grow. Uh, I grew it in the pot for five years. Uh, and then on the fifth year, I put it back here in the ground and then let it explode. And the sixth year, it gave me fruit. Wow. And so they, this is the largest they get. Um, I put it in a mango tasting uh, twice. And it got, I think, fourth once, and it got fifth when I took it to a bunch of college students uh, that were followers of the Most High in Georgia. And that was like out of 12, about 12 mangoes. Wow. So, and that's the first, first year. Wow. So this Crazy. is the second year. It's supposed to get better. Wow. Now, this is the famous Venus. This is Venus, the incredible hulk of, <laughs> of mangoes. Yeah, it's very late season. And the thing, Paul, I like about Venus, they can stay on the tree forever. They're not going to lose their flavor. They're not, the texture is not going to disintegrate inside. It's not going to get jelly seed. It is, I would say this would be perfect for commercial, uh, commercial production. Um, extremely late season, massive amount of fruit. Just a good fruit. Sadly, near us in South Florida, we get a bacterial black spot. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. It's very common out there for the Venus. Okay. All right. Well, we're going on over here. We got Graham. It is a food forest, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> this is my pride and joy, if you would. Uh, this is a multi grafted tree. Uh, it started out with just being Malika. And uh, in 2017, when we had that massive cold in Florida for the first time in 10 years, uh, this tree died all the way down to the base almost. And I was, I was disheartened and I was going to dig it up and get rid of it along with that longing tree that's behind it. And Chris, I text Chris from True to Tropical. She was like, uh-uh, mango trees are a little bit more resilient than what you think. So leave it. And I left it, it grew back, start back producing the Malikas, but I grafted onto it. If you notice, Paul, you got these round mangoes. Yep. That's not a Malika. <laughs> I got, I got, okay, I got orange sherbet on here. I got uh, lemon meringue on here. I got pina colada on here. Wow. Yeah, and Malika's on here. Wow. Yeah, they're all here. It is, they're, they're beautiful. Like these are the Malikas. And then you got wow. the little pina coladas. They, they getting bigger up there. And uh, yeah, it's, it's an amazing little tree. <laughs> but I love it. And this is the thing. It's shaded out. But it still produces like a workhorse, which is so cool. But, you know, I know that's a blessing. That's not traditional. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, this is. Oh my star goodness! Fruit. That's star fruit. Yes, but I didn't know they were here. Look at that! Yeah, there you go. Look at that. You know what kind that is? I grew it from a seed. 
Wow. Oh, Offered from the seed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's good, and there's flowers all over it, too. Yeah, yeah, I hadn't seen those. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, he, know, he knows how to, how, to, how to bless us, if you would. Yeah, he knows how to bless us. Wow, that's amazing. Okay. All right. We are uh, Barbados Cherry up under here. My very first one. Okay, we come on around. So glad you were able to make it out. Absolutely, man. And I'm so glad we could finally get to see your, your trees and just the progress of your the yard here. Thank you. Thank you. And so everybody, much. Uh, Orlando Gardner, his channel is, I'm going to put the link below the video on YouTube. Check it out. Amazing videos he posts often. Yes. And uh, very entertaining and educational. So yes, definitely sir. check it out. And I look forward to your videos all the time they come out, man. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, come on through here. I'm going to show you another section. Okay. These over here, which are in pots. These in pots, peach cobbler, Julie, pina colada, best, honey kiss, uh, just a few random uh, uh, mangoes that are growing in pots. Wow. And then that's a lot of my cerise that I'm growing there. We come and pick from that. A lot of what? Cerise. Okay. C yeah, cerise. Um, here it is. Phenomenal. What do you do with those? Uh, we boil it. <clears throat> okay. Very, very, very bitter, um, but uh, it cleans your system out. Um, it's, it's the worst tasting thing I ever had in my life, but uh, the benefit and how you feel the next day, oh my goodness, you know, uh, it's amazing. But uh, it, at our temple, in our church, um, there are a lot of people from the islands, and they said to curb the bitterness, just add lime. Okay. And so, but yeah, you you go from you boil it. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. Boil it, and um, and it cleans the whole system. It's online. It's, it, you you can Google Cerise, and it'll tell you all the benefits of it. It's just drinking it. <laughs> do you do any? Uh, some people like to actually boil my, um, uh, mango leaves. For the medicinal effects. Mm -hmm. I know somebody uh, from uh, Guyana and he came to my house to get a bunch of mango leaves mm -hmm. and that's what they want to do and I just thought it says the leaves of the tree will be for the healing of the nations. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know. That's right. So do you do anything like that or have you done anything like Not that? Not with the, uh, uh, the uh, mango, mango but the Moringa, Katuk, Cranberry Hibiscus. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have stuff out here. The uh, toothache plant. Yep. Um, I have a few medicinals out here. Uh, like I'm, I'm, I'm not as advanced as you, but I'm pushing that way. Patient with me. <laughs> so something happened. Patient with me. <laughs> <laughs> the first time ever, something happened to me as I'm filming. Yes. First time, I don't know where I am. Wow. And you are, and I'm like, I don't know where the end. Yeah, is. we we made a circle. Wow, it's first, a forest, <laughs> man. It's wow. a, yeah. Usually, but, I'm good with my bearings, and I'm like, where am I? Well, brother, you safe because you with your brother. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. If you get a look here, watch the the rig. This is lemon zest. Wow, wow. Loaded, Paul. Yep. Loaded, and they say it has problems. I haven't had the first problem with it. I haven't had the first problem, and it is loaded like this every year. No anthracnose, no. Uh, I do deal with powdery mildew, but like I said before, I just get the water holes and yep. every day if I have to. And the water holes will Now, don't do some it. people say rain spreads the powdery mildew? But you water from the top. And that won't spread it? No, well, it, it, it will. It will. It's spreading it down. But you water it from the top. Down, down to the ground. Got you. Yeah. Got you. And Paul, I won the battle. That's why when you were talking about it on your videos in South Florida, I'm like, oh, water, water, water. Right. Everybody that has uh, went into watering them like that, that method. Because if you just water the top, the powder mill do going to fall on the bottom leaves and they're just going to take over the next day. But you got to water from the top all the way down. Are you spraying it with the shower or just a full blast or what? Full blast. Yeah. 
Full blast, yeah. Uh, full blast spray. Got it, got it. Yeah, not, not the little bean, because yeah. you'll tear the flowers off then. Peace Cobbler. Wow. Peace Cobbler. She didn't do the best in production this year, but it's okay, because I got one over there in pots, and I pruned her, and she grew anyway. <laughs> but this is Peace Cobbler. One of the problems with Peach Cobbler is that people don't know how to pick it. I have mastered it. This is how you pick Peach Cobbler World. Everybody, walk by and smell it. It's going to tell you it's ready. I guarantee you. You smell that Peach Cobbler. When you smell that, that pungent mango smell, pick it, sit on the counter for two days. You got one of the most delicious mangoes on the planet. Nice. Uh, Philippine. Um which I keep trying to grab to. I, I haven't been successful. Um, I've been waiting on it for years. It haven't produced me one fruit in five years. And I keep, I try to get rid of it. I can't get rid of it. It's supposed to be one of the best tasting mangoes, one of the sweetest with the bricks in the whole world. So we'll see, we'll see. I've had it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you have? Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, I think you were down last year. Didn't we yeah, have yeah, that? that's right. Didn't he give you one? He did. He did. Yeah, You're yeah, right. Yeah. You're right. And it was good. It was yeah, good. Yeah, it yeah. was. But I haven't had one from my tree. Got it. Got yeah, it, got yeah, it. yeah, yeah. But it was good. It was good. Absolutely. Um, down here hidden is Palmer. Old traditional mango, traditional flavor. Great for backyard. The production is good. The fruit is one of the most beautiful mangoes they get up brilliant purple and red and green when they mature this tree even as low as it is got hit by the wind and all the flowers left except these two down what's it here. called palmer palmer okay yeah, palmer, old yeah. traditional yeah with a sweetest flavor and right here i wish they were red i can give you one paul but they're not this is ice cream wow and yep. this is my very first ice cream tree did countless videos on this tree. Uh, finally decided a year ago to put it in the ground. Two weeks after I put it in the ground, we had that cold. <laughs> had the cold. And, but she lived. And, and when it gets mango. extremely cold, do you bring anything inside or cover anything? I used to. I used to bring them inside, but now we cover. We do. We do. We, uh, because my entire yard is mulch. You've been walking on mulch the whole time. Yeah. I mulch every year, every year, every year. It's mulch on top of mulch. I'm big on back to Eden. Uh, we rake the mulch up, mulch up real heavy around the trunks and take, th this is what worked here for me. Blanket and tarp. Tarp by itself, no good. Blanket by itself, no good. Tarp on the bottom, blanket on the top, no good. Been experimenting. Blanket. And then tarp on top, mulch up close around it, and we've done good. We've done good. Uh, my tree is, is too much to bring in the house now. I just, I get the brothers from the church, and uh, we make an announcement at the temple and say, hey, I need help. And they come on out and help. We wrap them up. Wrap them up. And, 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 and the covering saves the life. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and this here is... A seedling, <clears throat> uh, one street, two streets over, the apartment complex, and there was a lot of people there from the islands in this apartment complex. Where they were redoing the complex, they ran all the tenants out, and the whole back property was like sugar cane, and they had this one mango tree there, and I know they were going to dig it up. So I went back there one day, dug it up, brought it here, planted it, and i just been babying it. Uh, it's probably going to be Madam Francis. I'm not going to, I'm not going to let it be that because that's a big tree and I'm not a fan of a bunch of strings in my teeth. I'm just not. Uh, I'm going to top work this. I'm going to top work this to something that's small and dwarfish. Probably ice cream. <laughs> probably ice cream and then we're going to go from there. Uh, right here in these pots, we got uh, Pim Singh Mom. My second Pimsing mom, no fruit. Fairchild, this year, no fruit. Uh, Desiree, Desiree mango. And Maha Chinook, which gave me three. 
wow. which normally is loaded, 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 loaded. But after this is torn down and the house is up, this is going in the ground. Um, yeah, so, uh, and then this is a great shot of the lemon zest right here. And then that little pot there, that's honey kiss. Uh, a double grafted honey kiss that I did. I was experimenting to see if I double graft the tree, uh, will it slow down the growth? And it, it did, it dwarfed it. And uh, I was, that was just an experiment that I did and it's, it's done well. It's loaded with little honey kiss, but I'm letting it stay. I don't want to mess it up because uh, that's my Cerisee there. People come by to get Cerisee sure. and stuff like that. Wonderful. Yes, sir. Yes, Thank sir. you so much, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad to have you come on out. All right, everybody. That was just a portion of just amazing yard. There's just so much stuff we passed up. He has a lot of non-mango trees that he's growing here. And so much other stuff will come back for part two in the future. But if you're in the Orlando area and you have any questions about gardening or you just want to see something successfully working, contact Kevin, Orlando Gardener. I'll put his contact information below. And on YouTube, his YouTube channel is Orlando Orlando Gardener. Orlando Gardener. Yes. All right. So everybody, thank you. Thank you for Kevin for all the great things you're doing. Everybody you, keep sir. growing.